Castellets and I'm back again with the series that I've called Knowing the Lord, Knowing Jesus Christ. Yesterday I was talking about uh, the two types of wisdom, the wisdom that descends not from an eye, which is the wisdom of this world, which is earthly, sensual and devilish, and the wisdom that comes from an eye, which is first pure, then uh, it is peaceable, easy to be entreated, etc., etc., which is the wisdom that comes from an eye. That's the wisdom that resonates in our hearts. But today I want to talk about uh, the knowledge of God because we want to get to know Jesus better. And, you know, the knowing Jesus is probably the best thing we can ever tap into in this world because, you know, we're bombarded with the ways of this world, the wisdom of this world on a daily basis, whether it's on the internet or on TV or whatever. I mean, you know, we're on, we're most, all of us are on lockdown right now. And all of us um, are spending a lot more time at home so we don't we don't spend eight hours at work anymore in this season. We so we have access to the internet and TV more than ever before. That's the world that I'm I'm trying to uh, help you to have less of and more of Jesus because we need Him if we're ever going to have an impact on restoring all things back to Christ. Okay, so the more we know Jesus, the more we know His ways, the way He is then we can actually tap into how we can change this world. Okay, so today I'm talking about the knowledge of Jesus. And Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 16, and everybody knows the scripture, which says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him would not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, in John chapter 10, Jesus says in verse 27, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. And he talks about eternal life again. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So he's talking about giving us eternal life. And then he says that uh, we'll never perish. And no one will be able to pluck us out of his hand. So in other words, we'll be his. He will have kind of final say in everything that comes out of us or emanates out of us. Okay, so there, the first scripture I talked about, talked about eternal life. Here again he says, I give them eternal life. Now, what is this eternal life? Well, let's go to John chapter 17 and see what Jesus says about eternal life. Because he refers to that throughout the Gospels. He talks about eternal life all the time. That word life, by the way, is taken from the Greek word zoe, which is spelled Z-O-E. And zoe basically means the God kind of life, the life that Jesus lived. That kind of life. So that's the way. So that's the eternal life that he's talking about. So this is what Jesus says in John chapter 17 and verse 3. He says, And this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Okay, so eternal life is about the knowledge of God. Okay, so we, if we have the knowledge of God, the only way we can get the knowledge of God is through Jesus Christ. Because he came to this earth as the exact representation of God in human form. Do you remember he said to his disciples in John 14 that if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. So we get to know about the Father or the nature of the Father, the ways of the Father through Jesus Christ. Okay, so now I want to just take you to the Apostle Paul who uh, preached the Gospel after Jesus Christ in the most effective way. I want to just show you what he said about knowing Jesus Christ. I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. He says, cease not, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is a prayer he is praying for the Ephesian church. Then he says in verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Now, we are talking about the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because eternal life is based on the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, he, he's praying for them and saying, I pray that you'll give your spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may have a knowledge of God. Now in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Paul is basically setting up the church. And he says that uh, in chapter 4 and verse 11, he has given some to be apostles, some prophets, some uh, evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for works of ministry. And I'll pick it up in verse uh, 13. It says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So it's important for us 
to have this knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of the Son of God. We can read the Gospels and read everything that Jesus said and get to know Him that way. But that's not enough. We need to also have a relationship with Him. Because, you know, the knowledge of Jesus, uh, he, he talked about it. You know, I, I read that scripture in John chapter 10 where He said, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So it's a two-way relationship that Jesus wants. That's the perfect relationship that He can work with. Not a relationship where we just know about Jesus, know about everything that He said, but we don't actually know Him. Okay, so in uh, just talking about the knowledge of God, I'm going to just go back to Matthew chapter 5, chapter 7, sorry, and just show you something that Jesus said. Because He said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. Okay, that's basically what He said. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, just to take you to another level of knowing Him, He says in verse 21, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, or not everyone who calls me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. In verse 22 He says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not performed many wonderful works in your name? And in verse 23 He says, Then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Okay, let me just stop there for a moment and I'll, I'll pick it up in a moment. So, he's saying, uh, some will say, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. And you might as well have said, I uh, greeted people at the door of the church in your name. I preached a message in your name. I sang in the band in your name. Whatever it is, whatever you do in the church on a Sunday, that doesn't mean that you knew Him, you know Him. Okay. Jesus is wanting a deeper relationship with, that exceeds this knowing about Him to actually having a relationship, a personal relationship with Him. Now, uh, I'm going to pick up this scripture from verse 24 and uh, show you what He's actually meaning. Now He's saying, yeah, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, so He's talking about the things that He said throughout the Gospels. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. So doing is as important as hearing. So that's part of knowing Jesus. is hearing His word and then doing it. Then He says, I will liken a man who does that to a wise man. I remember yesterday I talked about two types of wisdom. The wisdom from on high and the wisdom of this world. Okay. Now the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's eyes because it's, it's wisdom of man operating in the flesh on his own without any help from God. Okay, So a wise man that he's talking about here, this wise man is the one who's operating with wisdom from on high. The wisdom that is first pure, then peaceful, then easy to be entreated. Okay, So this wise man, he builds a house. So there are two people who build here. The one who builds and is a wise man, and then there's another one who builds who is a foolish man. There's two people building. They're both building. But one is building because he has wisdom. Okay. And Jesus says, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on the rock. Okay, So this person is operating in wisdom from above, and he has a solid foundation. Okay, he's, he's, The input he's getting is from the words of Jesus, the sayings of Jesus. And he, they permeate his whole being so much, that it, firm, it creates or it forms a firm foundation that he relies on completely. Now the other man, Jesus says, and everyone that hears these sayings of mine, so both of these men hear the sayings of Jesus, but this other man does not do them. Okay, He shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house on the sand. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it fell and great was the fall of it. Okay, So this foolish man is building based on the wisdom of this world, which is earthly, it is soulish or sensual, and it is demonic. Okay, so that wisdom doesn't help you to build a, a solid foundation. It's good to go to, to school and to get an education in this world, but that's not what's going to get you a better relationship with Jesus. It's the wisdom that comes from on high that will put you in a better position to have a relationship with Jesus. Okay, so I'm talking about the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus better requires you 
to have a knowledge of him from everything that he said, as well as a relationship with him, a personal relationship with him, which I'll get into 